Hi guys, Jackie M from Masters Malaysian Cuisine. We are back this time around with uh, Debbie Teo, our Nyonya expert. And thank you so much for your patience. We were just trying to do the transition between Chef Day session and uh, some of the technical issues we wanted to fix up just for your viewing pleasure. So thanks again so much. Make sure you say hello. Let us know where you're watching from and also hit us up with any questions. This is a rare opportunity for you to be able to learn from Debbie Teo, our uh, you know, our Nyonya specialist who has some amazing knowledge to share with us every single time. Uh, but before we bring Debbie on, I'm just going to play a quick clip uh, in my discussion, my conversation with uh, Dr. Haslina Abdul-Hamid, who is the Secretary General of the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Industries in Malaysia, who are our partners in this series of Malaysian Heritage Cuisine broadcasts. Okay, uh, I'll come back to you in a couple of minutes. The MAFI MOMC events that we're running as part of our campaign, it's kind of, to some extent, a response to the COVID-19 situation. Are you looking to kind of um, continue with that strategy of a uh, combination of virtual and on-site events to, to, to be able to reach a wider audience? Yeah, Jackie, with the new norms now, yeah, uh, with the rapidly changing uh, business landscape, trade promotional events uh, nowadays have also performed in the uh, virtual platform like what we are doing now and uh, via online marketing and also e-commerce. And uh, of course, uh, MAFI uh, through, our, again, our ACOs abroad, yeah, actively promoting Malaysia food product through various platforms, uh, collaboration and also partnership, yeah. And uh, for example, in uh, 2020, a total of 20 programs yeah, uh, has been conducted uh, by this um, offices with a value of 2.78 million yeah, uh, ringgit Malaysia uh, wow. generated, the sales generated from the programs that we were conducted, uh, we, we have conducted. Social media is also widely used to ensure continuous engagement uh, with the public. And um, for this year, one of most outstanding agriculture fairs uh, for partners to collaborate is through, you know, uh, Maha. Have you heard oh, about yeah. Maha? Yeah. Maha is the Malaysian Agriculture, Horticulture and Agrotourism Show. So in short, known as Maha. The objective of Maha is actually to promote uh, agriculture and agro-based industry as well as agro-food industries to stimulate their business and uh, relevant stakeholders also can leverage on this platform yeah uh, to showcase their product and technologies as well as to expand um a trade and also business opportunities oh fantastic yeah because i know maha was put on hold this uh, was it this year yeah i think it was this year or yeah. was it l last year <laughs> because of the COVID situation the yes jackie uh, maha was supposed to to we were supposed to hold um, Maha last year, uh, 2020, um, in conjunction with you know the APEC, 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 uh, because yeah. we hosted APEC 2020. Uh, this year will be New Zealand, but unfortunately due to the current situation, we have uh, well, well, hopefully we we can have it this year to yeah. hold that Maha again because uh, such a, a good event and uh, a very good uh, sales generating from the event as well. well that's great to hear yeah hopefully our MOMC chefs can be involved in Maha when uh, when it launches again <laughs> you're most welcome never love to <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, thanks again for uh, joining us. Uh, we have Chef Debbie Teo, our premier Nyonya expert with Masters of Malaysian Cooking. And again, this is our day number three of four days of two sessions each of live cooking videos brought to you by chefs from all over the world. And we are in Kuala Lumpur today at the Kontiki restaurant at Federal Kuala Lumpur, at the Federal Kuala Lumpur. So welcome, Debbie. Good to have you. Hi, Jackie. Good to have you. All right, yeah. so, uh, yes. Go ahead, tell us what you're making, and I'm going okay. to remove myself from screen in a little bit. All right, okay. Uh, a very good afternoon to everyone here at the Federal Kuala Lumpur, and uh, anyone, everyone that's uh, streaming into and viewing us from all over the world. Uh, today, I'm going to make two recipes, uh, which is the ayam buah keluak. Um, ayam buah keluak is... It's a, actually a very interesting dish um, because buah keluak 
its uh, scientific name is called Pangium Ideal. It's actually poisonous. So yeah, learn how to make this uh, special dish from scratch. And also the second dish is the uh, Bakwan Kapiting. Bakwan Kapiting means a crab meatball uh, soup. These are the two uh, recipes that you could find in an auspicious uh, event. Say, for example, Tok Panjang, Long Table Feast, or the Penang Nights will call it Teng Tok. So it's very rarely uh, found nowadays. Uh, even in restaurants, if they do serve this, it's very labor intensive. So many restaurants do not do this uh, actually unless it's pre ordered. So I would like to feature these two special dishes. All right? So, okay, let's go on with the recipe. So for the ayam buah kelor, it's not, uh, it's not coconut base, it's uh, tamarind base. So the most important thing is uh, to make your spice, spice base from ground zero. So what I'm doing is I'm going to grind all your shallots. I have shallots, uh, candle nuts, garlic, so shallots, soak candle nuts. Candle nuts, you need to soak them because if you do not soak them, then it'll be hard when you're grinding them. All right, candle nuts, I've already soaked them. Uh, garlic, two cloves of garlic. Lemon, uh, I would say galangal. Galangal is like that. Those who do not know how galangal looks like, it looks like that. So what we do is we skin them off and then just cut them into smaller pieces so that your blender would not burn, all right? Turmeric, turmeric roots. Okay, turmeric roots, I would suggest that you get the we call it the ibu kunyit. A lot of people, uh, when they're making their spice at home, uh, they have difficulties or I would say their spice do not turn out the colors that they see in the cookbooks or when we are cooking here. It's because they use a, a, a younger turmeric, I would say, uh, the, the young ones. So I would suggest to use the darker, darker tone or that we call it the ibu kunyit here. All right, so I'm using that. Oh, nice. I did not know that. Blatan. Like a black time. Yeah, I can feel my chest. Like this. Anyway, uh, lemongrass. For lemongrass, um, you need to slice them thinly, although you're going to grind them. Why? Why? Some people say, why? I'm going to grind them, so I'm just going to chuck the whole, you know, the whole stem of the lemongrass inside. No, what's going to happen is that when you chuck the whole thing like that, you're going to have a lot of fiber in your spice base. The Pranakans or the Yunyas, they want their spice base to be super fine. You know, they are super flaky. So yeah, so that is the, the trick. You need to slice them before grinding them, right? Okay, dried chilies. Dried chilies, you can soak them in just normal tap water or if you're in a hurry, you can uh, soak them in hot water, yeah? To make it tender. So all this goes in. And I'm going to teach you a trick. Oops, I haven't worn my apron. I'm going to blend my spice and it's going to, going to <laughs> explode in any. Cool. I, I want to ask you, you mentioned about soaking the chilies in normal tap water. Is that the preferable way of doing it? or? Yes, um, I, I personally soak them in normal tap water because I'm soaking like by the kilos. But okay. those of you who are like, you know, you're rushing, you can some even boil them in a small pot of uh, hot water to just tenderize it. You can do that. All right? Sure. Sure. Okay. So most of the time when you blend your spices, uh, a lot of people would say add water. Uh, I do not add water. Why? Because I'm going to need the oil to saute the spice taste. So I'm going to go straight to, for my oil and blend the spice. So by doing that, you're going to save, I would say, 50% of your sorting time. Yeah. 50%. Yeah. Oops. I got the power. All right. I'm just closing it just in case it sometimes it tends to you know explode out. What sort of oil do you use to be? Sorry? What what sort what of sort oil of? do you use? What sort of 
Oil. Oil. Oh, normal cooking oil. Uh, no olive oil like what Chef Dave said. <laughs> Just normal Malaysian uh, oil. Cooking oil. want it really fine so you can just uh, feel with your fingers that it's super fine now all right so this is done what we're gonna do is saute it now okay this process is the tedious a long and tedious process because the sorting normally takes like 30 to 45 minutes so yeah this is the process that normally you could if you're going to cook this at home you can actually uh, make your spice paste in a large batch and uh, decrease it into the amount that you need for the future sure. all right I have never used wakaloa before, but this is the only dish I know of that uses it. Do you use it in any other kind of a recipes at all? No, wakaloa is just for for the ayam wakaloa. It's uh, I would say the Malaccans, uh, the Malaccan uses uses a lot of wakaloa. You can't find it in the Chinese side. Okay. So. I've got a bunch of people saying hello. So thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. Make sure you let us know where you're watching from and hit us up with any questions and um, I will get Chef Debbie to answer them during her session. And also, guys, uh, especially if you missed Dave's session earlier, don't forget to stick around to find out what today's secret keyword is for the competition that we're running at the moment, okay? So while letting le my spice paste soft saute so it's fragrant, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prepare the wakaloa. Okay, wakaloa in this form is a thing, actually before this form, it's poisonous. <coughs> so this has been soaked in ash for 40 days before it being peddled to us. So you buy this like that, it's covered in ash <coughs> from the stores. Wow. From the black market. Then you soak them because you have to soak them for like three days, scrub them off. Um, excuse me, scrub them off so it's clean before making a hole in the pork lot and digging the contents out and stuff it back. So, I yeah, it's a very tedious process if you notice know that. <laughs> Some families would dig out the contents of the bakula and then they will mix some shrimp inside, means shrimp. But mine is just plain bakula um, with salt and sugar, okay? Some families, what they do is they don't do this process. It means they don't uh, remove the bakula filling. They will just knock a hole in the bakula and throw it in, all right? Masak, we call it masak botak, all right? So that's a trick of how to open this bakula. Once you soak it, you can see like there's a lip, uh, lip shape on top of the bakula. That's the cavity that you break. If you were to hit other parts of the bakula, it will not break. So yeah. Paul, can you, can, yeah. Okay. Paul, can you just switch the camera so we can have a close? Okay, cool. So uh, knock on the sort of like a lip line on the bakula and then open it up. Okay, you will get a, a dark brown hue or feeling that's like like earthy smell. All right, I would call this the Asian truffle. It's really very nice. Nice. It's expensive. It's expensive. In Malacca, um, they don't let you choose per bag of twenty pieces. Is is like maybe twenty five ringgit now? I'm not sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so that you haven't even started cooking the rest yet, yeah? obviously. Is it is it grown locally in Malacca? Um, like no, it's this is from Indonesia actually, but okay. we have uh, trees here in Kuala Lumpur. Um, 
he just Kasturi's uh, home has got one pangium idyll uh, tree. Pangium idyll, idyll means edible. So, oh, okay. sure. Yeah. So dig that out like that. Get the contents out. Then what you do is here. Now what you're gonna do is we gonna I'm gonna pound it. Pound it. Add some uh, egg white just to hold it together. Ah. Yeah. So you see the amount of work of uh, just having to prepare one dish. So this is really labor intensive. Can can you get it all prepared already, or do you have to do it yourself? Uh, in Singapore, I've seen them selling just the prepared ones like this. That means they dig out the contents of the bottle and sell them like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but but without the nut anymore. So pound them. Fresh, I would say good bakula is tender like this. You can see it's like easily mashed up and it's tender. Okay. Tender like that. And then you're going to add some salt, egg white, some egg white, just to let it hold together. And then use the, the nut. You have to clean them if they're dirty. Sometimes when you knock them out, you can see all moldy inside. You can't use that. Oh. So yeah. So actually, for me, for me, I would normally go to a supplier and I'll go do this one by one. So for all my events, I will do <laughs> one thousand bakula or two thousand bakula. So before <laughs> it's the wow. weight, you can feel that uh, it's heavy. If the light ones don't don't choose that, provided the suppliers allow you to do that, all right. Normally they will just put it in a bag and you buy it like where like that. So you normally don't get twenty pieces, even if the bag has got twenty pieces. So the cost is really high. Yes. So after pounding, so just stuff it back like that. So since it's so labor intensive, and I actually do this. For a lot of my events, what I do is, I after this uh, step, I would freeze it, freeze it in bags of like tens or twenties, so it makes my life easier. Huh. Because to clean, like say for a hundred of the bottle, it takes you many hours. Are you serious? Yeah, uh, and then you make sure that the shells do not go back into your filling. Okay. Yeah. So while we are sorting this, I'm going to do the Bakwan Kepiting recipe. Okay. okay. So Bakwan Kepiting, it's a crab meat ball with a prawns, crab meat and shrimp. And uh, in the Pranakan household, uh, they would serve it like maybe Chinese New Year or a big festive uh, birthday, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, so you can use pork, but here I'm using minced chicken, minced chicken, um, minced shrimp, and uh, kapiting, kapiting is crab, right? So crab. So all these three ingredients, just mix it together to make a meatball. Okay. Do you, use crab? Crab? Sorry? Do you, do you use like whole crab and then you, you, you just use the meat from it or do you buy crab meat? I bought crab meat. I couldn't get uh, fresh shrimp. Um, I couldn't get fresh crab at the market yesterday. Okay. So, and is it cooked? Is no, it cooked not. crab meat or is it raw? Yes, because it's raw. Meat. Yes. Okay. Sure, sure. You see? It's raw is very expensive. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So that's, okay. therefore, it's very costly. It's very costly for the restaurants to do this. Yeah. And how much are they going to charge? And it's labor intensive at the same time because you have to clean the crab, even if it's bought like that. There are the crab shell and everything inside. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. With the so chicken that you're using for the wakalua, are you using a whole chicken or are you using chicken fillets? I'm using uh, half a bird. Half a bird of chicken, 
Okay. All right. Uh, you, those who do not like to use uh, half a bird, those who like to use chicken breast meat, you can use chicken breast meat. Okay. Okay. So I uh, go back to the uh, bar one kapiti, which is the crab meat ball. Mix all together with the um, egg yolk. Some corn flour to just uh, hold it together. One tablespoon. Sure. Pepper and salt. So pepper. I'm using straw pepper here. Oh, nice. Pepper. Yeah. Salt. And just mix it all together. The Sarawak pepper is amazing, isn't it? Yes, it is. So what you can do is you can actually, for the crab meat ball, you can, um, after this step, you can actually steam them uh, into balls and then put in the fridge for a day. So to okay. break down all your work because it's very tedious. Right? My spice base is almost ready. So you're just so frying it to the oil splits, Sorry? basically. You're just frying it to the oil splits. Yes, just fry, stir fry under the oil splits and it's fragrant. I'm, I'm sure the audience here can, can, uh, can smell the fragrance of it. Cool. And uh, if you can see, there's not much oil in it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so my crab meat ball is ready. You can, uh, for those who wants to just throw your crab meat ball straight into your broth, I've actually boiled, uh, boiled uh, carcass, chicken carcass. And uh, since the shrimps, I've peeled it myself, what they normally do at home is that we saute the uh, shrimp shells and then yeah. grind and then sieve it. So you see amount of work here. So I've done that all that to come to this stage. Yeah. Saute your shrimp shells with some oil until yeah. it's fragrant. Add water, bring it to a boil, then uh, sieve it, then you get your stock. Yeah. So you have uh, chicken broth and prawn shells. So sure. it's really about one kind of thing. Great. So it's so luxurious. It's my favorite. I so love this prawn. is not, not everyday dish, yeah? So <laughs> don't do this kind of dishes every day in a, in a new kitchen. Yeah. With the ayam buah kalwa, it's always ayam, it's always chicken. They don't do it with any other type of meat. Okay, good question, Jackie. The ayam buah kalwa, because uh, for it being Muslim friendly to our Malaysian uh, friends and guests here, uh, we use ayam. But at home, you can use pork and uh, during auspicious, actually during auspicious uh, uh, festivities like Chinese New Year, actually we use uh, pork leg, kaki babi. We call it oh, kaki yeah. babi. Yeah. So during the olden days, all the, I mean, meats are actually expensive. So we only use the expensive cuts during festive occasions or big occasions, that kind of stuff. Yeah? Sure. Yeah. We have a question for you, Debbie. Michael yes. asks, where does Debbie get her energy for all this labor-intensive work? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, actually, yeah, it's very labor-intensive and there's not a lot of manual work being done. Yeah, Michael, I wonder that too. Everything Debbie does is very <laughs> labor-intensive. That's the culture, you know, that's the culture. But when you eat it, then you will know the difference that between, you know, uh, making it from ground zero, there's a lot, a lot of difference. Yeah. So they can, you know, the audience, you can actually make the spice paste in large batches, deep freeze it into the small quantities that you need, and then bring it out and just put it in your meat on the days that you want. And the best part about Pranakan cooking is that because it needs at least one day for the flavors to infuse. So actually, it's good for parties, actually. So you, 
you slog over the stove uh, the day or two days before, and then you look pretty on the day of, of the show, right? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, don't forget to hit us up with any questions. Like I said, Debbie is a premier chef who's in incredibly high demand. And we're very fortunate to have her be able to cook live for us, actually, because usually she is just run off the feet. So make sure you take advantage of this and hit her up with any questions about uh, what she's cooking today. And we will do our best to answer for you. So you can see that the spice base is already there. has changed color. And uh, the oil has separated. And it's really fragrant over here. I'm going to add in my cafe lime leaves. Okay? Sure. Just tear it. Okay, do not add any water now. I'm going to add in the chicken. Okay. So the chicken is skin on so that you get the flavor or the umami from the chicken, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's skin on. Now, with a uh, ayam wakalua, it's, it's, a, it's a Malacca Peranakan dish, right? It's a yeah. Malacca Nyonya dish, but not necessarily a Penang Nyonya dish. The Penang rice do not use a lot of wakalua. There are a few families that use this wakalua in Penang. Uh, they must have, uh, I would say, Indonesian uh, ties. Because you can find a Peranakan community from Malacca Penang, um, Thailand, Indonesia. And Singapore. Yeah. So the Penang um, Penang recipes are more Thai influence. Yeah. Penang recipe, if you check out the book, uh, they have a lot of crabus, a lot of salads, right? As compared to the Malacca dishes. Sure, sure. Uh, Zaleha Alton says to Debbie, Debbie, you look so chante. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think you can auction off your apron one day. Everyone's saying about how beautiful your apron, like with the trimming is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you can smell that the chicken is really fragrant over here. Then, if you notice that if you do not add any water, the spice actually um, you can saute it very quickly. And even blending it, you notice that. It doesn't splatter, so there's no splattering here. Sure. The tree. Do not add water in your when blending your spice paste, so that when you're sorting your spice paste, it doesn't splatter. So my kabaya can remain pretty. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. I'd, every time I see you cooking your kabaya, I'm like, oh, if I had a kabaya that that beautiful, I wouldn't wear it for cooking, you know. <laughs> I worry, I'd be so paranoid about getting oil splatter on it. You're supposed to wear it, right? <laughs> yes, true. Guys, don't forget we have our giveaway, our massive giveaway, and Debbie's going to reveal today's secret keyword later on during her session, and you can use it to score extra entries in the giveaway, which you can find at malaysianchefs.com slash m-o-m-c hyphen giveaway okay lots of ways to win and lots of prizes up for grabs as well so i hope you enter and um and i hope you win maybe even one of these aprons so going back to my about one to eating soup stock so i've added my chicken broth my shrimp broth and uh, it's starting to boil now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add in um uh, cabbage the original recipe for Batwan Kapiting is actually using, using bamboo shoots. Um, bamboo shoots are difficult to get over here. And if you get them from the market, most of the time it's got a very strong stench. So what I do, I've replaced it with cabbage. You can do that too. You can use cabbage or if you still like bamboo shoots and if you can get fresh ones, please do use them because that's the original recipe. Okay. okay. And uh, you need to make some garlic crisp and oil to garnish it later for your broth and uh, garnish it with coriander leaves. Nice, cool. So you can see, I'm, I'm featuring these two recipes. You can see that the Chinese influence uh, in the Pranakan cuisine. One soup, 
and then one is spicy and it's got all the local um i would say herbs here like that yeah so these recipes are beyond us i mean older than us so yeah. it's amazing right yeah yeah i just find it really fascinating that yeah it's kind of a a, a very fusion dish because it's got like the candle nuts and it's got all the spices and yet it has a very chinese vibe to it as well so correct all right so i'm going to add in the tamarind juice into your ayam bakura it's not too tangy it's just a tinge of uh, tanginess okay it's not, it's not like asam laksa that kind of thing no it's just a hint Sure. The salt and sugar to taste. Salt and sugar to taste. You put very little of both in it. Sorry? You've, you've put very little salt and very little sugar. I've added it earlier just now. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> So one my question is asking for your bakwan soup, is that regular cabbage or Chinese long cabbage? Regular cabbage. Okay. Regular cool. cabbage. You can use any, you can use the long cabbage too. It's fine. Cool. So I'm going to add in your bakwan, which is already prepared and stuffed back in. Now, is waka luaka an acquired taste or does it taste so delicious that everyone will love it right away? It's an acquired taste. Okay. It's Can you describe how it tastes? It's like no herby. It's like truffle, I would say. That's why I call it the Asian truffle. Okay. And when you cook it fresh, it, it looks like it's uh, it's um, orangey red. But after two days, you can see a black hue on it. So after this, I'll show you the, the one that I cooked for the guests here. Okay. Yeah, it sure. should taste even better because all the flavors have been infused into the chicken right to the bone. So it's really yummy. Cool. So this is ready. So I'm just waiting for it to boil. Then I'm going to add in the crab meat, uh, crab meat ball. Okay. So with the crab meat balls, can you actually fry it as well? Or is it just... No, always for this just... recipe, I actually steamed it. I, it's actually in the chiller here and there's a there's a, okay. there's a spot here. I can't open the fridge. Um, you just see... What I do is if you're like making in a large batch, like for this event, uh, if you don't have time like me, what I've done yesterday was I steam the crab meat ball for five minutes. So I shake okay. them into balls, steam it, and I put it in the fridge. So okay. when for today's event, I just pour the broth, pour your cabbage in, then just before serving, throw in your meat balls, crab meat sure. balls. You do not want it to be, you know, boiling over and over because then you won't have the taste anymore. Got it. Sure. So it's really fragrant now. So with the ayam wakalua, do you always eat it with rice, just plain rice, or yes, uh, ayam wakalua we serve it with plain rice. Same goes with your bawan kapiti, also okay. with plain rice, because the flavors are very intense. Okay. You just need plain rice, yeah. For those, uh, some people, some households, they actually like to serve their bawan kapiti with sambal belacan. So oh. yeah, yes, but one could be thinking then they will add a dollop of sambal blachan in the soup, in the soup and that's oh. how they eat it. Yeah. Oh, right. This is the fresh yeah. sambal blachan that you, you pound. Yes, okay. yes, that you pound. Yes. Yeah, it's weird, but that's how a lot of households, the Pranakan household have, have their but one could be thinking. Sure. 
So this but one thing you mentioned is really only for special occasions. It's not something that you would cook for dinner every week. Look at the amount of work involved. You know, it's really <laughs> tedious just to get your broth up, you know. But if you want to do it, you can. You definitely can. But for us, we have it in birthday parties or Tok Panjang, we call it Tok Panjang uh, dinners uh, sure. for weddings. Uh, or for big occasions, that kind of stuff. Okay. And with the chicken mince that you use, is it just normal mince or do you mince it really fine or really coarse? Just or? normal mince. Just normal mince. Um, the shrimp, I, I actually chopped it, uh, also coarsely, so that when you eat into the balls, it really has got that bite. Okay. 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 So it's not all soft and blended in? No, fully. no, not all soft and mushy. You can actually okay. see that. Right, it's chunky. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So if you see your iron flawed now, the color is not that nice. I prefer the one after two days. It's really okay. beautiful. Sure. So sure. it's really good for parties, like what I said. So prepare this uh, two days advance, even up to a week, you can freeze it up. And then sure. uh, just defrost it, uh, microwave it, and microwave it, and then you can serve. The flavors are amazing there. Cool. So my, my broth has been uh, boiling rapidly now. So I'm going to reduce the heat a bit. I'm going to add in the balls. You can shape it round. I've actually shaped it round. Cool. I think something the, sorry the the bakpan kepiting i think the ingredients aren't too hard to get a hold of at all really no, you just it's very easy crab. very easily available yeah yeah sure. chicken shrimps crab corn flour and egg yolk salt pepper to taste sure sure cool and then the broth you get it done earlier you can get it done earlier and then freeze it up Sure. And then just assemble on the day of, of eating. So if you know how to break down your work, it's actually a breeze. So come back from, from the market. What I do is I peel my shrimps. The shrimp head and the shell, I will start to saute and then make my broth, seal it and set it aside. Then I make my meatball and prawn, a crab meatball and steam it and set it aside. So when sure. you want to eat, like today, I have everything done. Right. I know this sounds like a really stupid question, but the ayam wakaloa, if you can't get a hold of wakaloa, can you use something else or it's just not the same? No, it's not the same. This is ayam wakaloa. The hero is the wakaloa. Okay. Right? Sure. Yeah. Sure. So, oh, we've just lost your audio here quickly. Hang on a sec. Um, hang on. Let's just see. If Paul can just try and fix it. Okay. Okay. Now you're back. Can you just say something? Can you hear me? Uh, we can. Yeah. Yes. It's, uh, it, we're using the backup mic. Let me just try the main mic again. Nope. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you see? If you can just unmute the main mic, Chef Bob's mic. Okay, can you hear us? Okay. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I think that's okay. That's better. Cool, cool, right. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay, great, great. Oh. So cook your saute and cook your ayam bakla until the chicken is tender. Once it's tender, salt, season it with salt and sugar and you're done. 
Okay, the consistency of your ayam bakro, I like it thick. It depends on you. If you like it thinner, so just add more uh, water to it. Okay? Okay. I love it thick so that when you pour over your white rice, it really, you know, it really is thick and flavorful. Okay. Now, how much sugar do you put in this? Is it meant to taste um, noticeably sweet or not? No, you can't taste the sugar content at all. Okay. It just okay. adds like a, a natural MSG, sugar and salt, that's all. Gotcha, okay? sure. So, when my stock is really done, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to garnish it with some uh, garlic crisp and garlic oil. You can add some into the broth itself. Yeah, my bad one is ready. Cool. Mm. Just thanks. All right, this is done. So I'm gonna plate it. You can see. Now with the ayam wakalua, are there different versions of it, or is it is it all pretty standard? Um, there's only one version, which is the sour one. We should we call it the. Um, sometimes people call it asam wakalua. Some people call it asam wakalua. Why? Because it's got no coconut inside. There's no coconut inside the the recipe. Asam as wakalua. Why asam is because we use tamarind juice inside. Yeah. Okay. Why do they not use coconut milk in it? Is it because it becomes too rich or? The recipe, the origin, I'm, I'm just following on the re original recipe. Passed sure. on from our great grandfather. So. Sure. so this is ready. I love the bowl, by the way. Thank you. So I'm just garnishing oh. some coriander leaves. Hmm. Paul, did you want to get into the close up? Okay. And here, this is done. Great. Are you able to hold that up to the side camera, maybe, so we can have a um, on to your to your left? Yeah, there you go. that's it. Oh, nice. Very cool. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it looks delicious. So when you serve that up, serve, how many of the crab bowls would you have involved? Uh, for today's audience? Uh, usually, no, I mean, usually like for a full serve. For a full serve, uh, we would give like three. three. Okay. Okay. Sure. Because these were actually served in a top panjang. During the olden days, the top panjang, I would say, or a wedding uh, event, you have hundreds of people. So sure. all the servings are very small. It's supposed sure. to be dainty, two bulk, full kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, during the olden days, weddings were like, they had like 12 days before the wedding to prep that kind of stuff. So that was a lot of work. A lot, a lot of work with no refrigeration and, and all. Sure. So if you look back into the history and the culture of the Pranakan heritage, you can see why they do certain things that way. And uh, these are all sorted and with lots of oil. So with no refrigeration, the food can actually keep for that long. Sure. And sure. I myself have done weddings, uh, uh, Pranakan weddings, uh, here in Malaysia for 450 packs. And wow. I do it alone. Yeah, I only have like four, four sous chefs to assemble. But like things like my jucha and my all the things, I hand cut. There's no mandolin. Why uh -huh. no mandolin? Because I've done promotions in hotels when I use mandolin. Say, for example, 20 kilos of turnip or bangkong or you call it yam bean. When you yeah. cut using hand cut versus mandolin, hand cut, I will still get 20 kilos. After man, after going through mandolin, my <laughs> cha or my piety feeling goes half because it uh, becomes uh, limp and there's yeah. no crunch anymore. Uh, so that's the like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. How so interesting. I still go back to the traditional methods because 
I've tried doing it with the modern method. Certain parts you can, like the grinding, you don't have to use your mortar and pestle because you're talking about 450 packs. You're going to die like this. <laughs> so I've, impro I've improvised using uh, electric blenders, but certain uh, things like the cutting and all that, you still need traditional way. You know? So, until, until, they design, <laughs> until they design a better, a better mandolin that doesn't seal half your <laughs> buck. Yeah, your buck. <laughs> I tried all. Yeah, I tried all. Yeah. So I'm gonna play the iron buck lot and then um, okay. we're done actually. Sure, great. I was kind of worried couldn't get it done within that hour, but yes. I love your bowls. It's, did you get them all in Malacca or do you, are they from family? I I, I don't know, I bought this quite a long time ago. Yeah. For those of you who've never been to Malacca, you should check it out. It's got like so much like of, of uh, the Nyonya culture that permeates the yeah, the, the vibe of the the, the the city in particular. You can get this type of bowls here in Kuala Lumpur too. Because yeah. the China cloud, yeah, yeah. So you just have to open your eyes and look hard. You would find sure. this was not from Malacca. This is from here in KL. Oh, nice, cool. Can you see? Yeah. I still don't like the color now. But <laughs> I'll shoot another color from the one that I cooked earlier and yeah. I'll post online to show the original color that it's supposed to be. So like yep. what I said earlier, uh, Nyonya food needs to be cooked earlier and uh, leave it to sit. Can you see? Great. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I don't think yeah. I've ever had it. Yeah. So it's really uh, yummy. Best eaten with your hands, not for really? spoon. Yeah, really? because when you when you dig up your baklot, the contents of the baklot, you put it onto your rice and you mash it, mash it with your hands and uh, pour the gravy over and then really eat. It's really yummy. That's how we do it at home. I didn't so know that's, that. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's how we do it at home. Oh, yeah. nice. Very cool. Well, thank you very much for this, Debbie. Uh, guys, um, yeah, everyone's admiring your beautiful bowls and all that. But yeah, guys, uh, don't forget, if you want Debbie's recipe, you need to sign up. Just head over to malaysianchefs.com slash mafi, M-A-F-I. This series is done in partnership with the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Industries, MAFI. And when you sign up at malaysianchefs.com slash mafi, you'll also get our exclusive e-cookbook collection of recipes from our eight chefs who are taking part in this series as well, okay? So if you signed up previously via malaysianchefs.com slash join today, um, sign up again anyway through malaysianchefs.com slash mafi if you want that special e-cookbook. But also, like I said, on top of that, at the end of this series, about a week out from the end of this series, we will have a special e-magazine containing this ayam wakaluak and bakwan kapiting and all the other recipes from our uh, sessions in a special mafi edition of our e-magazine okay so make sure you sign up um and that will go to both sign up forms okay um now michael's asking how do we know if the meatballs are cooked when they float up is that uh, how you gauge yes. Them? yes the meatballs are cooked when they float up you can see here the camera no yeah it's cool. float up Okay. Up. Sure, but sure. if you want, if you do not want to do the direct method like what I'm doing now, you want to prep for a party, steam it in the steamer for five minutes and remove it and then chill it in your chiller, in your refrigerator, but do not freeze it. Uh, once you freeze it, what's going to happen is that your perforated holes, it looks like tofu. Okay. <laughs> you don't want sure. that to happen. Okay. So I'm supposed mm -hmm. to give a, a secret code today yes. for the giveaways. Yes. And the secret code is BAKA, B A K A R. Yes. BAKA. For That's you, right. Yes. For those of you who are uh, eager and keen, and please do join the giveaways, please key in your secret code, which is BAKA, B A K A R. Yes. B A K A R, guys, BAKA, which means 
burn or grill in Malay. Um, yeah, if you want to sign up for the giveaway, MOMC hyphen giveaway at MalaysianChefs.com. All right. And we've got tons of prizes, including aprons, not the pretty one that uh, Debbie customized for hers. <laughs> that one's going to be. That's going to be a because, because Bate is so Malaysian, right? So yeah, yeah. yeah I added the Bate, yeah, just yeah for yeah. I think all our chefs are gonna go and dig in the cupboards for Bate and do it <laughs> with ours too. Um, all right, guys, thank you so much again for being good sports. Thanks for tuning in again. Like I said, amazing recipes courtesy of Debbie Teo, one of the top Malaysian chefs around the world, whose uh, cooking classes are so highly regarded that even people like um Otolengi has uh sung high praises about her all right so thank you so much guys again for tuning in don't forget to sign up for at malaysianchefs.com slash mafi if you want our special e-cookbook collection um for this series and also you will be the first to receive our e-magazine for the series when it's ready as well and if you want our giveaway sign up at malaysianchefs.com slash uh, Mafi hyphen giveaway. Okay, we look forward to uh, drawing some prizes at the end of this series. Thank you again so much, Debbie. And thank you, um, Debbie. Yeah, thank and we you. will see everyone back here same time tomorrow. And this time around, we will have our final two sessions with Chef Bob Admin yeah. and also Chef Johari Edras yeah. from Master Chef Malaysia. Have a have a lovely day, lovely rest of the day, lovely night, everyone. Thanks again for tuning in. Thanks, Debbie. Thank you, Jackie. Bye.